this, huh? Full on smattering of applause. Look at that. Hi, I'm Mark Kaiser, and this is what? I'm Wade Majors. He's oh. what? Did you Wait. say Wade Majors? Is it Majors? Get out of the Major. seat. Out of the seat. What? You are Alex Albrecht, hey. ladies and gentlemen, Woo. from Dignation, the Totally Rat Show. By the way, let me just say know. something. Yes, please. I love the Dignation. Here's why. Because you got the counterculture, the stick it to the man, double it. G. Yes. The double G, stick it to the man. I love that. I do. Everybody, I mean, first off, it costs us more to print stuff, which is awesome. <laughs> That's such an old joke. That's like <laughs> that's from my vaudeville days. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and Jack Benny. Yeah, me and Jack Benny. It's like, yeah, it's five more cents for every poster. <laughs> so Alex Holbrook. So here's the yes. thing. Yes, we are so glad to have you here. Yeah, dude. Um, thanks for having me. Are you kidding me? This is my first time in the streaming garage. Woo! It is. It is Welcome. definitely Welcome both streaming, streaming and a garage. So it, is. it really exactly. is. Lives up to the title. It's, it's not a streaming up. kitchen. Nope. Nope. It's not a streaming foyer. Could have nope. called it a streaming studio, but that's kind of boring. Yeah, yeah. Plus, it's a garage. Shh, don't I mean, away. I just say it's amazing. It is an actual <laughs> garage. Yeah. This is actually, I think, better than our garage where we shoot uh, TRS. I think there's sort of been more work done on this thing, <laughs> which is awesome. Yeah. All right, now, we'll take now, it. Now, here's the thing. Uh, yes. uh, I want to make sure that you've earned your right to sit okay. in this chair. Yes. Because this chair, they, we, they, we don't give That's this chair away. It's a sturdy chair, yes. It's a sturdy chair. Not anyone can sit in this okay. chair. Okay. Favorite movie, go. Uh, wrong, wrong. What was it? Top, huh? What did I? Oh, it's Doctor Tom Strange. Love is the answer, no. dude. Actually, that's very. That would be very close. Okay, I go. I, you know, Three Amigos is close. That's one of the ones we're going to be talking about, and that, that's definitely close. I was a big fan of that genre. Um, we talked about accidentally Total Recall because you gave me a question that was possibly going to be asked. Oh, hey, wait a and second. I Hang answered on for already a second. with Total Recall. Well, here's the thing. I, I, says, I says to uh, Alex Albrecht from Dignation, yes. I, say, I say, here's the thing. I'm going to ask you a question to test your movie cred. Mm. Do you want to know what the question is beforehand or do you not? And I said, Thinking sure. he would want to not know because he wants to say, stay pure. <laughs> not true. <laughs> he wants to know the question. This is the question <laughs> I said. I said, I'm going to ask you. Yes. The, the uh, name three films yes. from the watershed sci-fi year of 1982, which mm. basically, if you're a fanboy, is year zero. Right. They all came out in 1982. Yes. That activated a generation of fanboys named three films from that year. Right. And, and my you first said, film was Total Recall, which, of course, not from that year. But then again, I was six. So it's a little, I mean, I don't know if I was watching Blade Runner when I was six. Well, I wasn't six. There you go. Don't remind me. <laughs> I'll just say, just for the record, because, you know... It was a big year. You should say, because that was pretty surprising that all those movies came out. Tron. Yeah. Kids love the Tron. I love the Tron. Uh, Blade Runner. Blade Runner. E.T. E.T. That's huge. And the film that I've seen more often than any film ever, Star Trek II. That is the film? That's your... Yes. That's if I film. went, I, favorite movie, go, you would say Star Trek 2. Yes. Here's the thing with Star Trek 2. We talked about this the other oh, week. Not go. only... Yeah. Hang on. I, Not I, only no, does it have I have time. another one. Not only... Now, I mentioned this last week. Yeah. Because Captain Kirk goes down to this uh, space station thing, and he's got this, he's got this collared uh, jacket. Not only okay. did I go to every single Robinson's May in and 1982 look Star Trek and look for the Star Trek 2 pop collar jacket. jacket, but at the beginning of the movie, Kirk <coughs> makes his big entrance. And he makes his big entrance, and he has his book tucked under his arm like this, because he's like an admiral, and he's got to look all yeah, official. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he tucks the book under, the, the next day in school, Yeah. book tucked, uh, tucked under my arm. Oh, my God. That must have been an amazing entrance. You know what that means? You hey, what? everybody. I just saw the most amazing movie of my life. You I'll know what all this down. means, by the way? I what? am so effing lame. By the <laughs> way, speaking of effing lame, why did Mike give you a, 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 a carte blanche to uh, curse, and I can never curse? What? Uh, I don't he know. He said he can curse. I, he gave he's me a carte guest. blanche. I always ask, because I curse a lot. Although the weird thing is, when people tell me I can curse, I rarely ever curse. It's it, and seriously, like when I go on TV shows and they're like, "You can't curse," all I want to do is curse. All, every word I think of is, I'm like, "Well, I could use that word." Well, that's a curse word. And then when somebody's like, "Yeah, hey, you can curse all you do want," you I'm want. like, "Eh, eh, I'm yeah. like whatever." You don't need to. Huh? Yeah. Well, Kenny, folks, do you want this guy to curse? Do you want this guy to just let's? Do you hey, want to just draw some f bombs? Everyone wants this guy to curse. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> so, but when, let me what? go back. Star Trek Two was that the one with the earwigs? The Death Earwigs? Yes, that's ah, the one. That was where the, the creepiest thing that yes, ever happened he, in almost any movie. This I've ever is seen. SETI Alpha 5! Oh and they throw God. the thing into his thing. Getting the helmet on and the ear thing. Oh, goodness. Shrub even go Brittany to sleep. wants to hear cursing. Shrub Brittany? That's, the, that, that's on the YouTube. We're YouTube Live on YouTube right First now. Off. Shrub Brittany. Curse says, Shrub Brittany yes, is curse. amazing. Claudius who, 07 says Dignation Curse. Is oh, there a Dignation, special Dignation curse. curse. I wish there was. Well, we may have just coined a phrase. We should make one. We should make one tonight. Yeah. 
Although it'd be a little weird, I'd come, show up for a dignation. I was like, hey guys, we came up with a curse. Yeah, on this other. Yeah, yeah and I, I think we own the intellectual <laughs> property, actually, if you do it in here. Yeah, right. right. I'm just saying. We owe them $20 every time All right. we say it. Okay, by the way, two more questions, then Shoot. we'll move on to uh, uh, Scream 4. Okay, yes. And your try this at home pick, which we now know is. Three Amigos. We'll talk about that amazing. later. Yes. Two more questions. Shoot. The hat, what does it mean? AFK. The hat means uh, away from keyboard. There's my camera. Away right. from keyboard. Uh, basically, it's a way to tell people. I mean, it's so stupid. It, it doesn't actually mean don't come up to me, I'm not here. Uh, but that's it's an MMO term of like I'm you can't talk to me I'm away from my keyboard. Got it. Okay. Uh, don't get it. Counterculture. It's okay, I don't yeah. edit. I have no idea what's going on. It's very okay. grungy. It is. Uh, second question. You're yes. now directing. Why? I'm directing because I love movies and I love making movies and I uh, got bored of acting. Uh, acting's awesome and I love the act of doing it. But there's like six hours where you're sitting on your ass waiting for everybody who's doing fun stuff to set up. And then you get to go and do like 20 minutes of fun shtick. Uh, so I was like, well, I, all the people who are like setting up the shots and like figuring out what to do, that looks like fun. And they're doing that all day. So I started doing it and realized that it's really, really fun. And yeah. And you just finished a sci-fi film? Uh, yeah, we were done, done, done with the with one sci-fi short that uh, I directed. And then we're work, we were in post right now on a second uh, uh, sci-fi short that is specifically going to be for the internet that we're really excited to premiere hopefully in like a month maybe it depends we're working we're waiting on stuff now as a uh, as an <clears throat> as a, an actor a, yes. a present actor hopefully yes. future actor because that's Definitely. money but if it turns it. out you direct it could be former actor sure. whatever works do you now appreciate the directing arts now that you've been in the chair everybody <clears throat> asks you what color should the wardrobe be yeah. where should this coffee cup yeah. be how should i read this line do you have more yeah. appreciation now for directors having directed your own film? Uh, that is an interesting question. I think I always had uh, um, uh, esteem for directors. I mean, I always knew that what they were doing was really difficult and, and that, you know, it takes a, a very specific type of person to have an answer for every single question, you know. Um, but, uh, but doing it made me realize how hard it is to deal with actors. I mean, and, and to be honest, and myself as I was on the other side. And one of the things that I found the most fun in directing was being able to interact with actors from a place of knowing how actors wish that directors would interact with them. So it really became this fun sort of like, yeah, well, let's just try this because that's how I would, I mean, I'd probably do it like this. Let's just try that. You know what I mean? So it became really fun. But it's, I've always had a, a good appreciation for directors. Now I just know it is very, very hard work. Sure. Super fun, though. Super sure. fun. By the way, that's the wrong answer. The right <clears throat> answer is Star Trek Two. It was Star Trek Two. Uh, Blade God Runner darn it. And Tron. Okay, uh, so before we go to uh, uh, Scream 4, let me just say that uh, yes. we do a whole bunch of uh, shows here at the Streaming Garage. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're Stupid for Movies, which is the only show that matters as far as I'm concerned. Uh, 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 at yeah. least it's the only show that matters Thursdays, 8 p.m. Pacific Correct. time. Correct. Yeah, Good yeah. plug, huh? Woo. The self-plugging. Yeah, nice. Thursdays, 8 p.m. Self-plug. Uh, uh, Facebook.com slash Stupid for Movies. Facebook? What's that? Okay, so... Uh, YouTube, Streaming Garage. Uh, uh, never heard of it. Okay, so Friday. <laughs> April 22nd, there's a new streaming Woo! garage show. No! The new yeah, why, am I, why was I not told? My God. <laughs> it, now get this. What is this? This is the Super Scary Monster Horror Theater Show, which producer Mike will explain right now. Amazing. Yeah. Well, that might be the name. Here's what we're going to ask. We're going to say, if you want right now, go to, yeah, just skip this show. <laughs> Open up another tab. Go to Facebook.com slash Streaming Garage. Right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're now putting up for a vote of what the name should be. It's not a super movie, it's on a streaming garage. I know, but I put it on the Put it on streaming garage. Ah, We're going to have amazing. it on streaming garage. Facebook.com slash. Amazing. That is Elaine, who, helped, uh, who created the show along with <coughs> Travis. Um, it's going to be a show, I'm trying to think of how much we should give away. People should just tune in, maybe. I, yeah, hey. 8 p.m. next that, Friday. That 8 p.m. next Friday. Extensive. I think it's going to be the Super Scary Horror Monster Theater, maybe Super Scary Streaming Monster Theater, Screaming Monster Theater. So we're trying to like come up with exact names. Screaming, name. screaming that. But uh, it, if you yeah. like horror movies, if you like horror movies, if you like uh, funny, it's going to be very comedy driven. <laughs> if you like, if you like the funny. I don't like funny. I don't uh, like funny. It's going to be comedy driven like horror. Humor. <laughs> and uh, and if you like uh, amazingly uh, <laughs> hot hostesses with senses of humor and some other weird stuff that goes on, please tune in. I think you've just described Friday, everything that's on G4 right now. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's, but without the tech. There's yeah, no tech. Yeah. There's no tech. It was stuff. perfectly vague enough. Yeah, it's perfectly vague enough. I love it. I'm excited. It's not, I'll be there. I'll it's going to be I'll very direct it. and Why very exciting, I? and it's going to be actual live TV, appointment live TV. We do a lot of you know different hosted type shows. 
this is kind of hearkening back to an earlier day of how TV used to be done live. Uh, nice. So it's, it's very much, I don't think, what anybody else is doing right now in this live space. And since we're on YouTube Live now, and that's kind of getting bigger, we thought we'd give us a shot. Dude, live, live, there live. So that means that Stupid for Movies now becomes the, uh, the, younger, the younger son who is uh, completely forgotten about in of favor course, of, yes. in of fav uh, the of older course. son who's forgotten about in really favor of the new kid. You no, know. because yeah. you the were the baby. first show, hmm? and we did five other shows, and you're still the flagship show. Oh, you guys no. just went over, oh, let me say this, sweet. on Ustream, you just went over two million views. No. Whoa. Hey. 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 Round of a smattering yeah. of applause. Stupid for it. Movies gone yeah. over, and our, and our numbers are going way up on the Facebook page and on the YouTube page because of uh, Stupid for Movies. Oh, nice. Look and at all that. of you out there. Here we you. are. Ego poorly stroked. What I'm saying is, is that, uh, first of all, thanks to the crew for that. I, no, I'm please. just the host. I'm, you know, here's, here's what Wade and I usually are. We're what's called the meat in the seat. Ah, interesting. You know, the meat in the seat, that's where, that's like the anchor. They call yeah. it the meat in the seat. Yeah, yeah. We're the meat in the seat. The crew, they make it happen. That's true. This is true. Thanks, that Mark. is true. Without them. Oh, come on! Oh, look thank at that. you. <laughs> yes, it was. Okay, so uh, yes. we've, we've done the plugging. We've talked about plug the AFK. We've talked AFK. about the, uh, the Totally Rad Show. Totally Rad now Show. Now it's time for this weekend in movies! Yes. Yes. Let's do it. Oh, wait, I forgot one thing before we go to this weekend in movies. Uh, I got it. No, no we're I gotta here. come back. There's no I know. No, we got to do, do one more cool thing. Uh, I just got back from NAB, uh, National Association of Broadcasters. And New Tech, who makes this TriCaster, which enables us to do live switching. If you're wondering why this show sort of looks different than maybe a webcam show, New Tech TriCaster. If you want to do your live yeah. show, yeah. without without New Tech, we're nothing. And they have a whole article that uh, about us. I actually wrote it, so it's also <laughs> um, But I did not realize. They asked me to write an article about how we do the show, and they gave us this crazy, Amazing. huge three-page, four-page <laughs> spread with everybody's picture in there and a full page of student oh, movies. Is that me? So that's crazy. Uh, yes, this You're magazine not. is live. This is magazine is live. <laughs> this is not, yes, yes J Mac is, is right there. Yes. right there. Switching. That's yes. him right there, switching the camera. Amazing. So uh, <laughs> we've made it. Amazing. Don't throw me on the ground like that. There's a picture of me in this. <laughs> All right, this weekend in movies. Movies, there it is. All right. Well, we only have one movie to talk about, yes. and uh, that is Scream 4. Yes. Now, uh, kids love the Scream. Kids love the Scream. You love the Scream. I actually did. Uh, three, not so much. Uh, two was good. The three, not so much. Scream was, I mean, Scream was ahead of its time. I mean, Scream was, a, you know, to be a sort of meta about an, a genre and then a genre happens is re, was sort of started with Scream. And it was a really great movie. Yeah, it was a great movie because the whole <laughs> meta self-referential thing yeah. was a little fresh at that time. Yeah, yeah. Now it's basically old hat. Everybody, yeah. everything's all meta whatever yeah, and yeah, yeah. circling back on the wacky. And it's now the challenge 10 years or whatever after Scream 3 is, uh, how do you freshen it up for a new generation? And I go into the screening, ah. and we'll talk about it, this uh, the movie in a second. I, I go into the screening, the, uh, the publicist hands me this piece of paper, which I will now read to you because I've just learned how to read. And I want to test it out. That's how good the movie is. You learned how to read. Yes, it was subtitled. <laughs> uh, this is what they handed me. This is no joke. Uh, dear journalist, we are so thrilled, journalist, <laughs> we are so thrilled to be able to show you Scream 4. Wanted to make sure to explain that due to the secretive nature of this movie, we would really appreciate if your reviews and stories don't give away any of the secretive plot points, kills, and of course, the killer. We empower you to help keep this exciting and mysterious for all the fans and moviegoers. As movie fans yourselves, not, maybe not so much nowadays, but as movie fans yourselves, <laughs> sucker punch, I'm sure you know how important it is to be able to experience the thrills of, of a film like this as intended. Thank you so much. Interesting. This was handed to us by the good people at uh, Dimension. Have you ever gotten anything like that for any movies? Of hey, I mean, you don't tease anyway. You know no. not to give away spoilers, right? Well, as, here's as critics. Yeah, look, there, there, there have been some famous instances. Most famously, <clears throat> Gene Siskel giving away the ending of the Crying Game, oh boy. where sometimes <clears throat> there are critics who give away the endings of films. Yeah. Rather rare. The problem is that nowadays it's not just film critics from. Uh, outlets that are known, sure. nationally known. Now you get these basement bloggers in their yep. underwear saying, dude, I know who did it. Right, exactly. And, and theoretically, actually, now it's all that information's out on the web now. I mean, they literally, there are a bunch of people that are like, here's what happened. Well, what's funny <laughs> is that, well, you're right. And yeah. what's, with, with this, though, what's funny is that they did not allow plus ones. Interesting. There was no plus ones. You had to go yourself. And the reason you had to go yourself is because maybe they trust me not to give, a, give it away. It. But whatever floozy I take to the screening, right, yeah, yeah. assuming she can type, she, she might, might 
go give it away. crazy, yeah. You just don't know who the plus ones are going to be. So yeah. they really locked it down. There were no plus ones. Yeah. They handed out this thing, and in the end, uh, the butler did it. Ah. There was no butler. There was Amazing. nobody named butler so in the movie. Quick. It's a wacky nutty. So quick. Yes. I was supposed to actually go to this screening uh, on Tuesday. I was in San Francisco, so even on TRS, we had uh, 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 a nice lady from the Latino Review come in and guest review it with the other two guys. So I have seen their reviews. I'm interested to hear what you thought about it because there were very um, specific feelings about the movie. So I'm very interested to see what you thought about well, it. Well, I would like you to review the film as if you've seen it. Let's do that. Oh, I felt can't like do that. all of the kills were, no. <laughs> were <laughs> all fantastic. Right. <clears throat> all right, well, in the, the film picks up pretty much 10 years after Scream 3. Uh, Sydney, who was played by Nev Campbell, returns to uh, Woodboro 10 years after the Scream 3. She wrote a book about her ordeal, and now she comes back to plug the book. And of course, wherever Sydney goes, Ghostface follows. The, the uh, cast is broken up into sort of uh, two factions. There's the old guard, which are the ones from the old film, which includes obviously Ned Cam uh, Nev Campbell. Also includes uh, David Arquette, who plays uh, now Sheriff uh, Dewey. And Sheriff Dewey mm -hmm. is now married to, uh, 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 what's her name, uh, Courtney, Cox, Courtney Cox, who plays uh, a former investigator. Although not anymore, I don't not, think. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure what the uh, status <laughs> of their relationship is. But Courtney Cox plays a former investigative <laughs> reporter who is sort of itching to get back into the game now that the killer is back in town. So let's take a look at a clip, and then we'll talk about what I thought, and we'll talk about what Alex thinks he thought. Amazing. So two of you got phone calls? Yeah, us two. What's your favorite scary movie? It was the killer's voice. From Stab? Or, I mean, you know, from your life. I'm Kirby, by the way. I'm their friend. And the killer didn't call you? No. Is, is that a bad thing? Does that mean that I'm not going to live as long as these two? No. Maybe. Of course not. Just, uh, just be careful. Oh, my God. Did you hear that? I'm going to be next. Now, the new guard of the cast is led by Emma Roberts, who plays the cousin of Nev Campbell's character, and Hayden Panettiere is also there, and mm -hmm. a bunch of, uh, bunch of other nubile teens who exist to do what in a film like this? Be stabbed and have sex. Yeah, that's it. Hey. There you go. I make movies. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> you, you know what? You should direct Scream 5. I should. I'd just be like, take off your shirt and be stabbed in the face. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Scene. Uh, <laughs> now, the movie sort of straddles that line. You know, the movie really isn't bad. It straddles the line between comfortably old school and sort of new school. The movie was directed by Wes Craven, who directed the all of them. He directed the original. Wes Craven is 71 years old, and Kevin Williamson, who wrote the original, is 46 years old. So here you get a bunch of people from sort of an older generation try or who are comfortable in this you, you can tell they're writing this and directing this almost from just from sense memory they're, they, they're comfortable in this world and we're sort of comfortable being in this world you know I, their challenge is that how do you update this to uh, a younger generation who is all meted out at this point. So the whole idea that you can write uh, a movie that references you know, blogging and, 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 uh, and iPhone apps and that kind of stuff, how do you incorporate that into the film so it doesn't, look, doesn't feel like it's just thrown in there to update it? I have to say that they didn't do a very good job of incorporating all this newfound technology into the plot. There were some uh, pretty trenchant zingers, which I think mm. is sort of Williamson and Wes Craven kind of getting out their little their feelings, their little bitter feelings about torture porn and yeah. where, where society is going. <clears throat> and I, 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 I like that. Uh, the movie does have an old school 80s horror film feel to it. So I thought the film was basically okay. I, you know, hmm. it's the thing where, is it scary enough? You know, again, Wes Craven does this sort of stuff in his sleep. He did, of course, Nightmare on Elm Street and all the other screen films, Hills Have Eyes. Uh, so he can do this stuff in his sleep. So, yes, is it scary enough? Kind of. Is it, will it resonate with a younger generation who will maybe now want to see more and more of these? Probably not. Yeah. You know, and I don't know what they thought of well, on your show. Well, the guys, actually, one of the things, it's funny they brought up the scary thing because uh, across the board, all the guys from, from TRS basically just said, it's, it's, not, it's not a horror movie. It's not really scary at all. There's really nothing scary about the movie. It's, uh, Dan, uh, my buddy Dan Trachtenberg, who's one of the co-hosts of TRS, loved it. Like, loved it. Favorite Scream movie. I mean, he was like, this is how, you know, sequels should be done. He was, it was, he, he loved it. Uh, Jeff liked it a lot, but nah, you know. Uh, but they did. That was one thing that they said was they were like, it's it's not a scary movie. Because you know what? The <laughs> but thing also, is, they were saying people are desensitized. And the funny thing is, is that they had even said that that was became a referential thing 
the, you know, this one kill, somebody got stabbed, and he was like, oh, it's just just a stabbing? That's kind of lame. And then right at the end, it was like, well, people are just desensitized, and they think a stabbing is just nothing. And it's like, that's exactly what I was thinking when that scene but, happened. You know what I mean? But that's what, <laughs> that's what brought this whole torture porn thing on, because it is yeah. so difficult now to get audiences to, uh, to respond to this sort of yeah. stuff. And, you know, the thing with Wes Craven, is, the great thing about him is that he sort of uh, helped perfect the modern way of telling these stories mm. with, the, with the boo moments and the things yeah, coming yeah. out of, uh, I mean, it was done before that, but in, in a modern sense, he helped perfect that. Oh, yeah. With the music stings, the stuff coming out of, yep. out of, out of drawers, and you open the door and there's <laughs> nobody there, and then you close the door and the guy's, the guy's right guy's behind. behind you. Yeah, you know, yeah. he, he, helped per- <coughs> he helped introduce that to a modern audience, yeah. but the, the downside is that that's the only way he knows how to tell that particular story. Yeah. So he, not, he can't I think we're update. A little bit more desensitized to that kind of jump. Because you know I mean? right, he yeah. can't update his technique yeah. for an audience that now thinks that a saw film constitutes horror. Yeah. Because the thing is, is the thing with the saw films and with modern horror now is that there's a difference between horror and tension. Tension. Yeah. Is very hard to do. Right. If you just want to, if you just want to disembowel somebody, right. Like a torture porn film. I think there's Adobe filters for that. Right? There's a. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like Adobe you can do that. It's like, oh, there comes the link. I don't, I don't, I don't see the filmmaking yeah, uh, right. uh, prowess in that. Right. Now tension, that's something different. That's right. what Hitchcock does. You know, if you want, you know, if you want, want to watch a film like Alien, the original Alien. Right. The original Alien is just nothing but just tense. Yeah. You are, and it's not even necessarily that violent, except for a couple scenes. A couple exploding people, but, but it's yeah. It's just nothing but tension, and that is editing and yeah. camera movement and music yeah. and performance and all sound this design, stuff and that sound stuff design. Is big, big. It's all got to come yeah. together. <clears throat> so I think that a lot of these torture porn guys don't really know how to do that. So I think the hope was that maybe Wes Craven would come back yeah. and show these young whippersnappers how it's done. Yeah. But in the end, Wes Craven, who again is 71, he can only really tell a story this way. Yeah. But that being said, uh, I sort of liked being back in this world. I was yeah. okay with it. Yeah. You know, I, I'm I, definitely going to see it. I mean, from, from what I've heard, it's 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 definitely worth worth a watch. So I'm excited to see it this weekend, as you all should do. I guess I don't know. I don't know <laughs> well, if we were recommending it or not. I was just sort of like, whoa, wait a okay. second. Well, we have a uh, <laughs> uh, we have a uh, a system here. Oh, you have a system. Yes. Okay. We think a these series things of out. clicks and buzzes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a series of ones and zeros. <coughs> buy, rent, or burn. <clears throat> oh, okay. Either buy it, meaning go see it. Yeah. Rent it, meaning meh. Or burn it, uh, forget it. Yeah. Uh, now, because basically, Wade Major, who usually sits in your uh, yeah. chair, Wade is a hater. Got it. Now He gave two buys this year. Hmm? He gave two buys this year. He's seen 30 films he gave two I buys. He gave two guys. Source Code, right? Which is terrific. <laughs> was a yeah, buy, okay. and okay. the uh, Soul Surfer was a buy. Those yeah. were two buys of the year. Was Soul Surfer the one with the, the chick with one eye? Yeah. Yes. That's is that out yet? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. He gave it a he gave what it a buy, which means go to the that. theaters and see it. Mark, what are you saying? I'm saying it's a rent. I will give oh. Scream Four a rent. Right. Interesting. Hold on, let's get now because I will probably is, rent it, so that works. <laughs> well, no, because people people just assume that the uh, that the rot up their butt film critics would Got hate it. it. Yeah. Not true. Interesting. I thought it was a rent. Amazing. And the people over at your show. Yeah, Dan probably, was like, buy, 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 go right now and see it. He was like, I'm in. Jeff probably was it. I'm in too. I think everybody was, uh, you know, everybody was like, "Go see it. It'll be fun." Yeah, it's you know, it's it's hard to say where horror is going to go from here. I mean, I think I think that the scream thing sort of had their own little corner of the universe. Yeah, it's not something that can really be copied necessarily. Yeah, you really need to do. You really need to find a new way to tell these stories. And I think that now the torture porn has sort of run its course. Yeah, uh, it's got to be. something It does else. feel like it's kind of going out. And that you know. the sort of thrillers are sort of back, you know, suspense thrillers. Uh, you know, and, and the thing is, is that people people tend to think that suspense thrillers are, thrillers are for adults. Yeah. You know, but that's just not true because, again, you know, if you are just ratcheted into your seat for two hours, I mean, that yeah. is really good stuff. Oh yeah. And you don't get films like that that much anymore, mm-hmm. because you know, and then all the and then you know, yeah, the soft. It, it's really horror has just really been just devalued. Yeah. You know, it's just not the genre. It, it's it's not a genre that attracts the quality of filmmakers right. that it should. Right. Because yeah, it's well, considered low budget. Definitely. And you get a lot of companies like Dimension and Early Lionsgate mm-hmm. and those guys who would just crank these things out because they were cheap. Yep. You know, and kids would go see them, and yep. they're easy to scare. Yep. And they don't really attract world class filmmakers, which is too bad. Yeah, because because it, it takes a world class filmmaker to really say, do it right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's a couple of movies that are coming out. Um, uh, Guillermo del Toro is producing a movie. Oh God, what's it called? Is it called E.T. Blade e. Runner? E.T. Blade Runner Tron, or, or Star Trek Two? Or Star Trek Two? Uh, no, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a it's a remake. Um, 
things that go bump in the night, maybe, or something like that. Well, he he's a guy who can definitely. But it's not he's not directing. No, but, but he's. But but I saw if, the trailer at Comic Con and it was like, or a segment from Comic Con and it was like, okay, that is creepy. If if he, <clears throat> but that's the thing too, creepy. You don't get creepy a lot. No, I know. You don't get atmosphere a lot. Atmosphere is really key in horror movies. I mean that that is it. You know, when you think back on like Friday the Thirteenth, it was that. Cabin in the Woods, creepy, you know, the foggy stuff, you know what I mean? Like, that's the stuff where, that's those are the creepy moments that really stay with you, you know what I mean? Now, Scream 4, not that film, but still, it's okay in its own right. Yeah. So, uh, that's the only film we're talking about, and you didn't even talk about it. I barely talked. You didn't even and see it. Was? A Rent. This Week in a Movie! Hey! <laughs> Always gotta give him the button. I love it. Bring the button. Bring the button. <laughs> All right, so, um... So your, your favorite horror film, go. Oh, God. My favorite horror film. Uh, you know, I'm not a big horror guy. I'm going to say, I'm not a big horror guy. Probably one of the 80s, maybe. The Shining. Say The Shining. Oh, I like The Shining, but it gets a little boring in the middle. I mean, no offense to, you know, The Shining. It does. You watch that now. You watch that movie now, and in the middle, you're sort of like, oh, God, stab somebody, please. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where's Scott Man Crothers? Where's the axe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Johnny, where are you? Go. Uh, okay, say Alien. Uh, aliens, well, I don't really, I mean, that's sci-fi. I mean, Aliens would be mine if that was considered horror, but I, I see that as sci-fi. Right, sure. Yeah. Um, all right, well, here's the thing. We, so that uh, was a horrible evasion question, answer. It really was. It really was. I have to say, you're not answering my questions no. very well. Uh, good night, everyone. Alex Albrecht, what? You know what? Okay, here we go. Um, I'm going to say uh, The Orphanage. Ooh, good yeah, one. Yeah, that was a great, that was a really great horror movie. Going, uh, going foreign. Yeah, yeah, I had to go that far. <laughs> <laughs> Orphanage, by the way, uh, we're not doing that on uh, a buy, rent, to burn later, which we'll get to in a few yeah. minutes, but uh, that would be That's a buy. A yeah, oh, most definitely, yeah, yeah. Very good film, very well shot. Yep. Very atmospheric, like yeah, we're talking about. Yeah, and there was some creepy stuff when she's knocking on the wall to get the kids to come. Oh, boy. That was, I, you know, I don't know what she was saying. Blap, blap, knock on the door, you know, whatever it was, but... You jump when you see it. This is gonna creep your ass out. I mean, that is creepy stuff. Uh, all right, so uh, there you go. That's creep four. <coughs> now next is uh, it's, it's it's a thing we do. I like things. Well, usually we it's the news, like, huh? Usually, usually we have Chad, news, we usually we have Chad movie. Bader Nothing from the happened. news on. Uh, Chad uh, is not here with us today. Mm -hmm. but, so uh, so we're gonna skip the news today. Wait I know, a second. People are Hang on a second. You're saying that Wade isn't here. And Chad Vader's Chad, not here. Does that mean in nine months we're going to see some tiny little oh, baby with like the, a little plastic kind of mask on? Amazing. I thought what? you were going with they're the same person joke. No, nah, that's went, too Clark. You went all weird on me. That's too Clark Kent <laughs> Superman. That's not. I'm going to do the Clark Kent wow. Superman. Joke. Not true. So uh, instead usually Chad doing... Vader does our news. Huh? Not this week, because this week instead we have something in the else. cord! We got something else. <laughs> 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 There we go. Amazing. Hey, whoa. Oh, was that the news? Oh, no, 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 no. Huh? News. This just in. Throws the thing. Oh, no. Although, so, we have, although we're talking about a great film that involves so news the later cord. on in the segment. Yes, yes. Mike. I'm trying to make a segue. I was going to explain it. I want to impress Alex Albright. All right. You want to explain? <laughs> He's from Dig Nation. Do you want to explain cutting the cord? There are no segues in this stupid show. Do you want to explain? You got no, a lot Mike. of graphics, but no segues. <laughs> this is Mike's moment in the sun. No, no, no. You explain cutting the cord. Can I also say happy birthday to my mom? Oh, uh, you can't follow that. How I run the cameras, that? I can do whatever I want. <laughs> We're talking about horror films. I know. Well, no, come... tell, tell us what cutting the cord is. <laughs> cutting the cord is, uh, I forget. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so if you can watch movies instantly online on your you know, Roku, on your TiVo, on your Google mm -hmm. TV, on your computer. You don't need cable anymore. They call it cutting the cord. So we recommend things you can watch. I know I'm, uh, I use Netflix a lot, and I'm always like, I don't know what to watch tonight. This segment helps you decide, and we recommend some great movies you can watch. Yes, bada bing. So what's going to happen is yes. we are each going to name two films All right. that you can stream instantly. Oh, okay. And when I say instantly, I mean after this show is over. Although I say this like I didn't prep and have two movies. I was like, oh, yeah. That's oh, that's Let's interesting. I, I, I can... Somehow you guys have graphics for movies <laughs> I just came up with. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Those tricasters are amazing. <laughs> I can read my mind. So I will go first. Please. And then let's just say after that... I would go. You would go. Yeah, okay. And then if we were to follow this pattern. You might go again. I would go again. Perfect. And then to wrap it out. Yes. You would I go. could go. Yeah. Oh, boy. It writes itself. Who needs Wade? <laughs> 
Is that really? Or Chad Vader, no, who's way secret identity. Exactly. <laughs> teleprompter? <laughs> the teleprompter of your mind. Uh, so the first film from Cutting the Cord this week is available, Warner Archive, two ninety nine digital download, the 1975 classic Dog Day Afternoon, mm. which we are talking about because Sidney Lumet, who was uh, one of my directing idols, died last week. And it was a very, very sad day because mm. Sidney was, I, you know what, Sidney Lumet was a wonderful director. He did so many classics uh, at the LA Film Critics Association Awards a couple of years ago. We gave him our Lifetime Achievement Award. Mm. And when you, when you look at the films he did, he did about 40 films. He started with uh, 12 Angry Men in 1957. And then his last film, when he was like 82 years old, he directed Before the Devil Knows You're Dead with, with uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. So he had an amazing career. And what, what was so amazing about Lumet, and then we'll talk about Dog Day Afternoon, what was so amazing about Lumet was that he had this, he had sort of this anti-style style, where he was not a flamboyant director. His whole thing was gritty, ground level, character stuff that looked very lived in. And if you want that vibe, the best mm. place to start is Dog Day Afternoon from 1975. Here, Al Pacino and uh, John Cazale play armed gunmen who attempt to rob a Brooklyn Chase Manhattan bank, and they wind up in the middle of a 14-hour siege, taking like 12 hostages. And it's a great film because Al Pacino is, he is confused and conflicted and complex, and he's strong and he's weak, and it's a great performance before he basically turned in all of that and became just flamboyantly <laughs> insufferable, which is sort of what he is now. This but is some of the best old Pacino that there is. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I like the, you know, Godfather's great, but I, this is better old Pacino for me. Because I love, <clears throat> I, I don't love him when he does it now, but back right. then, I loved it when he was so in his head yeah, yeah. and he was so conflicted and he didn't know what to do and he, his eyes would sort of bug out. Yeah. And I just loved that stuff because it was so interior. Yeah. And that's what he was so good at yeah. back then. And John Cazale, well, you know, yeah, John Cazale yeah. is an amazing guy because, look, John Cazale, here's the thing with John Cazale, is that yeah. he's, John Cazale starred in five films. Mm -hmm. Every one of them Knocks nominated the for Best Picture, yeah. and then he died of cancer. Yeah, I know. So really literally, bad. every film this guy was in, yeah. you know, Deer Hunter, Dog yeah. Day Afternoon, Godfather, classic. Yeah. And then he, and nominated for Best Picture, yeah. and then he died of cancer. I, and crazy. the thing with Cazale is that, <clears throat> is that all the, all the people from his era they idolized him. Yeah. You know, he had Wasn't he dating uh, Meryl Streep? Uh, Meryl Streep, yeah. He was dating Meryl I mean, Streep. It's crazy. And uh, there's a great documentary on him actually called I saw uh, it, yeah. I believe it's called It Could Have Been You. I know that you did it. I know that you did it. I know something that you like did that. It. So something it's, like that. Yeah, I flipped it on and I was like I know it was you. Yeah, yeah. I mean And that's the documentary, yeah. it's great. But um, when it comes to Dog Day Afternoon and City Lumet, the way he moves the camera, uh, the lack of a score, the sense of place the hot atmosphere of that bank that slowly gets more and more, the atmosphere just builds and builds and gets yeah, thicker and about thicker. Tension, yeah. And tension, And also it became, as, at, for the time, it became a bit of a media satire because what happens is after the siege begins, the media comes, the crowds come, and then this guy, played by Pacino, who's a Vietnam vet, he becomes sort of this cause celeb on the news. And again, this is yeah. 1975. Yeah, right. So this is before reality TV and paparazzi, whatever. So before all that stuff. Yeah. So the idea that this guy would become a media sensation during the 14 hours of the siege was a bit of a unique thing. Yeah. And it's just a, it's just a great film. I, I absolutely got, implore you to, look, if you don't stream it, that's fine. Rent it, buy it. So Whatever it's only do $2 with it, what, it's $2.99 if you want to uh, download it. That's great. Stream it. It's yeah. fantastic. Huh. So Dog Day Afternoon is my first pick. Alex, Amazing. That is a great, a great pick. Well, thank you. Alex, what is your first pick? So my pick is a little, uh, uh, a little eclectic. Uh, I stumbled upon this actually when I had sort of started making the shift to getting into directing. And I was like, I, I, I need to find to consume more information about filmmaking. And I found on Netflix... <laughs> was wandering through the, the Netflix library and found this uh, documentary called Tales from the Script. Uh, and it's a documentary, so be prepared to sit and watch people talk. <laughs> um, but it's a documentary that covers writers and uh, writer-directors, which is why I found it very informative uh, to me, but um, all about people's experiences writing uh, professionally in Hollywood. And, um, you know, Frank Darabond is in it and a bunch of... Uh, huge writers and some big writer directors, and um, it to me helped just explain how weird this whole business is. I mean, that's the thing I got out of the most is 
we so much weird stuff happens in this business and the movies that you see on the screen where it says written by and a person's name that doesn't really matter i mean it, it, usually it's not one of the people that they interviewed is the lady who wrote blood rain the movie and she was like that movie is not the movie i wrote <laughs> I, you know, I got a paycheck. Well, Gwen, you know Gwen I mean? Turner, who's that writer, has yeah. some funny stories about working with Uwe Boll, who, oh, who is like yeah. legendarily the world's worst director. Yeah. You know? And that, to me, that is the stuff where you go, it's such a big, it, it, Hollywood is so incestuous and, and, you know, the process of getting a movie made is so glacial. It's like, you, you know, the, the fact that anything gets made and get put out every weekend blows my mind. Um, and it's really great. So if, if you are interested in filmmaking, it's a really great step into understanding what it, it you know awaits you in the world of Hollywood. Well, Paul Schrader says something interesting in the movie, which is that he says um, he says write movies because you if you must. Yeah. Because you have to. Yeah. Because you're going to put up with so much. Oh yeah. And be shot down so many times. Yeah. And have your heart broken so many times and put in so much work for no money. Yeah. That do it. If you must. Yeah, that for me, and, when I first moved to L.A., um, I actually, my first acting coach is a guy named Dennis Berkeley, who's an old character actor. If you look him up on, you'll be like, that guy from everything? Uh, and the first day I sat in the class and he said, he said, if anybody in this room can, can be mildly happy doing anything else as a profession, go and do that right now. Because you're, this is not, unless this is the only thing you can do to be happy in your life, you shouldn't be pursuing this. And it's true. And he, you know, he was like, look, there's 20 people in this room. We'll be lucky if one of the people in this room gets to, to do this for a living. And he was like, and it'll be maybe a 0.5% chance that any of these people are, or any of you, because I was sitting in the class, um, become superstars. I mean, that's just, that's the nature of the game. And what's, <clears throat> what's interesting, too, and before we move on to the next one, is that they also get into straight to DVD or straight to video writers too. Yeah, yeah. You know, so here are guys who put up with all of that <laughs> and more. <laughs> and it goes straight to DVD. And it's you know? like Dinotopolis. Yeah. And it goes straight to DVD. Yeah, well, there was the guy who was talking about how uh, he's like, he's got 15 movies made and he literally went to a writer's therapist group because he was so mad that he wasn't make that his movies were going straight to like Cinemax. And then in the writer's group, like the, the it was literally like uh, counseling for writers. Uh, he said, I finally left and was like, I need to shut up because everybody in the, in the place was like, I've never sold a script. I just want a movie to be made. I just want to be able to see my words on the screen. And it's like he stood up and was like, you know, I'm an asshole. What am I doing? I've sold like 15 scripts and I can, I can watch every, every single one of them. But, you know, it's that thing of Cause are you happy or are you happy, you know? Because mo movies, <clears throat> are, movies are a director's medium and the writers are yeah. the bottom of the rung. I mean really movies right now are almost a studio executives medium. Yeah, no doubt. Cuz they they decide what at least in America, they decide <laughs> what, what 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 crap gets made. Yeah. To oh, totally. You know. There's so many gatekeepers now it's not even funny. You know, that's why you get the American films you you're, you're getting nowadays, yeah. especially during the first quarter of the year, which, you know, Well, is but the worst. it's also it's tough when you go somebody's got to say yes to, you know, 175 million for, you know, Transformers whatever 7 or whatever. The we thing on? is that they know. don't, but they do because it's safe. Well, that's they, the, yeah, they, that's the they thing. They figure I I'll say yes to this. Right, yeah. Cuz it's such a safe bet that if for some reason it tanks, no one's going to blame me yeah. for greenlighting such a safe bet. Well, that's the other thing is it's like, you know, people get fired. That's the thing. It's like you choose to say, "Yeah, that sounds like a good script," and then it doesn't do well. You get fired. Like, that's what happens. That, I think, is what really needs to change. It should go, ooh, bad choice. Or, hey, great choice. The audience didn't want to see it. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know what the public at large wants to see. And it's like, that's okay, because nobody knows. You know what I mean? Nah. Right, because, because the idea, and then we'll move on, but the idea yeah. is not to make a good movie. The idea yeah. is to make a movie that opens well, so that the yep. corporations that own these studios can then report their quarterly earnings right. and their stockholders are happy. Yeah. What that has to do with creativity and movie making? Yeah. No idea. No Probably idea. nothing. Probably. Probably nothing. <laughs> so that's uh, Tales from the Script, which is on uh, Netflix. Uh, my next one is also from Sidney Lumet, who again died last week and was my idol. So I'm doing two from Lumet, whether you like it or not, Alex. Dude, I'm, I'm, in. I'm in. I'm in. Do okay, it. Good. Do two. Oh, that, that rant sort of relates to this next one. What? Uh, I love this movie and I can take it some more. <laughs> <laughs> Network! One of my all-time favorite films from 1976. 
Now, uh, in the film, Peter Finch, who won a posthumous Oscar, he plays Howard Beale. Howard Beale is anchor of the, is the once mighty anchor of the UBS Evening News. <laughs> and now that his ratings have fallen, Howard Beale gets fired, and he goes on the air and says, my last day is in two weeks, and on my final show, I'm going to kill myself. And it is, you know, I, I, I showed this film recently to someone who had never seen it, and mm -hmm. they're much younger than I am, mm -hmm. and... It is very hard to convey to them how prescient, 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 or prescient, yeah, right. I don't know, I'll say what I want, how prescient this film was. Mm. In 1976, there weren't four networks. There, right. were, there, there was no cable. There was no reality TV. You, you didn't put real people on television. Right. You know, but Patty Chayefsky, who won an who, uh, you know, Oscar nominated, won an Oscar, for, uh, this unbelievable script, he, he was able to predict what was going to happen in media. Hmm. For the next 40 years. When you yeah. look at Howard Beale, mm -hmm. who slowly, you know, implodes on air over the course of a number of days, you know, really, he's Glenn Beck. He's <laughs> Keith Olbermann. He's these guys, these yeah. sort of blowhardy guys who go on there and they just slowly implode on yeah. the air. That's what this guy was. And the idea that Chayefsky could just, he, the guy just had a, had, first of all, so that's the reason why it's hard for younger people to really understand Grass the, the subtext of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, only because what what they're talking, what they talk about in the film, is so commonplace now. Right. But in 1976, it was like science fiction. Right. But what's amazing about the film is that it holds up anyway. Yeah. Just as a great film. Hmm. You know, I, you know, Ned Beatty talking about how you know there is no America. There's no democracy. It's just Exxon and AT&T. <laughs> it's just corporations. That's it. Amazing. And, you know, nowadays it, it's hard for uh, younger folks to remember. But, you know, when Robert Duvall says, you know, historically news divisions were expected to uh, lose money. Right. And Robert Duvall says, here's Howard Beale, who's willing to read the news and collapse on camera. Let's make money off of him. News can actually make us money. Yeah, yeah. And that actually wound up coming maybe five, ten years before the, the, the real concept that a, a network's news division yeah. doesn't have to be a loss leader for the network. Huh. The news division should make hmm. money. So once the news division was seen as by these corporations, yeah, yeah, who buy these networks as as an avenue to make money, then it didn't become about news anymore. It yeah. didn't become about news gathering, the purity of news gathering, hmm. and the fact that this film was able to presage, I like that word, presage. Ah, oh, J. Mac like right presage, uh, <laughs> presage that by like ten years is just another reason why this film is unbelievably timeless and amazing. It's, it's, it's a great film. It's Faye Dunaway, Beatrice Strait, yes. both won Oscars for it. I will say I am one of those semi-younger people who will have to be exposed to this movie because I haven't seen it. Whoa. It is. Whoa, what? Yeah. Them's got shame. List of shame. Then it's fighting words. It's square, squarely on my list of shame. Uh, I'm telling you, the, the film is absolutely magnificent. It's one of my favorite films of all time. It is just bleak and dark. And Chayefsky, mm. who was a heavyweight. <clears throat> yeah. The guy was a heavyweight. He also wrote another terrific film, uh, Oscar-nominated, called The Hospital, which I don't think was as good as um, uh, this one, Network, yeah. which was with George C. Scott. But it's another one of those scathing films that yeah. takes a look at the underbelly of this of society hmm. and where society is going. He was able to sort of push us into looking at where the culture is going, and the guy was just amazing. So, but Network, which is uh, Sidney Lumet, uh, William Holden is great in it. It is available uh, on Amazon, two ninety nine rental to stream. Perfect. And I cannot recommend it highly enough. Amazing. I love it. Uh, well, we actually talked about my second movie earlier when asking about my favorite movies, uh, which is the um, uh, Steve Martin, Chevy Chase, Martin short comedy, uh, Three Amigos, which I've actually shown people this movie and they've not kind of gotten it. So I can get that maybe it's not for everybody. It's, it's, I like to say that it's, it's, it's my favorite of that sort of 80s genre with the three people who were ruling those types of movies for me all together in one uh, in just the wackiest exchange of a movie ever. Uh, it basically takes place, I think it's actually a period piece, it takes place in like the 50s or something like that, um, in the sort of studio system, the old studio system in Hollywood where these three um, uh, actors, played by Steve Martin, Chevy Chase, and Martin Short, play the three amigos which are horrible, stereotypical uh, uh, Mexican gunslingers. Three white guys dressing up as Mexican gunslingers. 
um, and they get fired from the studios. They uh, uh, then get a, a telegram inviting them to uh, the town of Santa Poco uh, and want them to save them from uh, El Guapo, this horrible guy who comes down from the mountain and shoots things and all ho just horrible treachery. Uh, they think it's a, an invitation to do a small show. They have just been fired, so they decide to go. They steal their costumes, head down to Santa Poco, and hilarity ensues. Not just hilarity. There is a plethora of laughs. Hey, plethora, huh? Very nice. Hey, thank you for your uh, for all you uh, Three Amigos fans. Oh, dude, I, I, Three Amigos is one of the highest quoted movies that there is for me. Um, and not only that, uh, I was surprised to find out when found out many years ago uh, that Randy Newman co-wrote the screenplay. Now, we talked about this before, because it was, uh, uh, I mean, this is obviously an old um, uh, Saturday Night Live group. Lauren Michaels co-wrote it and executive produced it. Um, uh, John Landis directed, uh, Steve Martin co-wrote it with uh, um, uh, Lauren Michaels and Randy Newman. Now, I know there are some songs, you know, the, the singing bush. That's uh, right, that's Randy amazing, Newman's. That is uh, Randy Newman's ooh. voice, which is amazing. Um, and. Uh, and to me, the, the, I mean, it's just, this is just one of the funniest movies that, has, that came out of the 80s. And there are, great, there are other great movies that came out of the 80s, but for me, this movie takes the cake. I just have two words for you. Yes. Lip balm? <laughs> ah, come on, well, everybody who knows actually, the Amigos and the three of them, there's a lip balm and it's crazy. We, well, uh, yeah. we, uh, we, we actually, asked, <clears throat> yeah. I was going to say, we, uh, you know, we originally, before Wade couldn't make it, you were supposed to come in and just talk about this movie. Yes. And people were going to Skype in and talk to you about it. So now yes. I'm saying, feel free to Skype in because I've gotten a lot of requests during the show. <coughs> oh, yeah. Well, dude, so let's, let's talk about Let's round amigos. table this and talk about Three Amigos for I love a few it. minutes. Well, first off, so Three Amigos, we, when we first started doing the Totally Rad show, one of the things that we initially set out to do, we've been doing the show for four years, um, was we were going to do these sort of spoofs of different movies where we would take scenes directly from movies, lift them from movies, and then apply them to sort of our daily life. And one of the first ones that we did was that exact moment of the lip balm, uh, which was a dream come true because I got to play the Chevy Chase character and pour water all over and throw well, it down on the ground and it, put a little lip balm. What's great about it, too, is that <clears throat> it, it, that's nonverbal comedy. Oh, that 100%. Scene, it's all silent comedy stuff. Lip balm stuff. is the only thing that's said in that whole scene. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that, th uh, those moments were hysterical. And then when you get to see the guys just go off reservation, you know, where they're calling the, uh, the, the, the ghost uh, or the invisible man or whatever it was, I can't remember what it's called, at the singing bush. Um, and they all have to read out of the notebook exactly what they're supposed to say and then shoot a fi fire a shot into, this, into the thing. You know that literally it was just, you do your wacky thing that you think is written. You do your wacky thing that you think is written. You know what I mean? But that, that's what <clears> we were talking about earlier where... We talked b b before the show, backstage, we don't have a backstage. Well, um, we're this actually is backstage. <laughs> it's backstage, it's, it's, it's downstage, it's, it's upstage, yeah. it's a stage. Stage right. We talked about Your Highness. <clears throat> yes. And the reason why I didn't like Your Highness, I thought it was terrible, was yeah. that you just felt as if it was just a bunch of dudes saying, wouldn't this be funny? Yeah. And, you know, even though that sounds hilarious in theory, there is a certain amount of discipline and focus that has to go into even a movie where you go, let's just do stuff that's funny. Yeah, and you, it, it's that type of thing. Within the structure of the story, here's a moment where we just do whatever we want that's funny for this plot moment. You know what I mean? Whereas it feels like Your Highness was sort of like, I guess we just fight a dragon and then we'll just do that. You right, sure, I mean? sure. I actually enjoyed it a little bit more than most people, but... But it's nothing, nothing like The Three Amigos. Nothing like The Three Amigos. <laughs> Three Amigos is really funny. You know, Landis directed this after he did uh, Spies Like Us. Oh, yeah. And I think... Another great 80s comedy. Sp y yes. Sp I th here's the thing. Spies Like Us and Three Amigos, I think, are not necessarily the best possible result uh, uh, for those involved. Like Steve Martin, Martin Short, Chevy Chase, sure. John Landis. You're like, yeah. it's going to be Animal House on steroids, it's yeah, going to yeah. be Ghostbusters, Stripes, everything. Yeah, yeah. And it wound up being very funny. I like that movie a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, in terms of like comedy pantheon, you know, you, you do, it's sort of at that that uh, upper middle layer. Yeah, yeah. It's not the Animal House, not the Ghostbusters, yeah. not the Stripes, but it's a solid, 
funny comedy, and I and I know it's not fashionable to say, but I like Chevy Chase. I always like Chevy Chase. Yeah. He's funny. <clears throat> Fletch makes me laugh. Yep. You know, I know that he kind of gets a lot of knocks. He's kind of a jerk in real life. Yeah. And whatever, but I the love, guy's funny. I love him. I mean, I think. Oh, we got stuff. We got people. Yeah, we What's got, up? No, we got no, chatties. We, we have calls. Dude, in. give me calls. What's up? Give us calls. Let's I was do about it. to make a brilliant segue, <clears throat> no. and then Alex Albrecht from no. Dig Nation is like, "Let's call." Oh, I just saw I saw this, yeah, and I was like, let's do that. Chatter thing. Professional broadcaster. Right, I hear, go I hear some good humming. Hello? Hello. Oh, hey, no. What's going on? Hey, what's going on? Yo, Alex, I'm a big fan of Dignation. I just thought I'd call in and say what's up. Well, what is up, my friend? I saw your, I saw your tweet, so then I decided to check out the show. Nice. And I'm actually kind of hooked. It's, dude, that's what, that's what happens. Woo! Welcome to the party. Yeah. yeah. Working on some homework. It's twelve o'clock in the morning in in uh, New Jersey, uh, and then I was like, "Ah, oh, well, I should try uh, going on Twitter." So like, I went on that. and I saw that you tweeted. So I was like, "Oh, check this out." I'm not a big movie person, and then I was like, "Oh, this is sick." Have you seen Three so, Amigos? I actually haven't. I should you, check it out now. Now you know. Well, so what is? It's on Amazon, right? For Three two? Three Amigos is on Amazon streaming. Amazon streaming. Go okay. check it out it's right like, now. It's like a couple bucks. It's like nothing. Dude. And it's so funny. Oh, I'm going to talk to you. Uh, we'll get to your calls. Wait, wait to call him before somebody else is done because I'm going to get all these, all these pop-ups are coming up right now. Oh, yes. You nice. Skype pop-ups. Yes. You can't oh, stop Skype pop-ups? So. Skype pop-ups? Uh, Why is that weird to say? About tonight? You going to check out any uh, Sydney? Yeah, you going to see uh, Scream 3 or Scream 4? Are you going to watch uh, Dog Day Afternoon? Maybe, maybe Scream 4. Uh, but I definitely am going to download uh, Three Amigos and check that out this weekend. Yes. The system works. <laughs> yes, we're affecting yeah. culture. We are turning a younger generation yes. onto the funny. A plethora of younger. Uh... Okay, tell tell me something. What is your favorite comedy of all time? Your favorite comedy? Uh, that's that's a tough one. I'm not a big movie person, so. What's your What's uh, the funniest TV show that you've ever watched? Ooh. The TV show you love. Um. Hmm. Name some piece of I'm, funniness I'm, in your life that you can <laughs> that you can quantify I'm, into I'm the like funny. The fact that I'm not uh, doing Chappelle homework Chappelle is funny. Chappelle show. Family <laughs> guy. Chappelle show. That's a great answer. Chappelle, Chappelle show. show. Yeah, good. It's a good. So, I'm actually gonna plan on hopefully seeing some stand-up comedy in New York City. Not, this, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. In about a month. I've actually so. performed uh, improv at uh, uh, God. What was it? Caroline's maybe. In New York when I was sure. in college. That's where I was actually considering going. Oh. Caroline's Car is great. Caroline's is uh, that's legend. Great. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's amazing. They, they, always, have, uh, they uh, always have big Kevin, characters. Kevin Pollock, Kevin Pollock will be there at uh, Caroline's in two weeks. Ke go see Kevin Pollock Who, in two uh, weeks. Who some of us work for. I, we, I direct Kevin Pollock. I got to go so. there because Alex recommended it. Done. So. And go, we walk <laughs> up to him go. and be like, I have no idea who you are. Yeah. But Alex told me to come yeah, to say, say, I saw, say to Kevin Pollock. No, seriously, this will work. Go to Kevin Pollock say, <laughs> I saw Alex on Stupid for Movies, yeah. and the guys from Stupid for Movies told me to come to Caroline's and see you. I'm not kidding. Yeah, he'd Tell him that. that. He'd love that. He'll probably autograph stuff for you. Yeah. He might and, autograph and, stuff for you. And, and then you can use all that to get laid that night in the city. be fantastic. Hey! It's a win for everybody. Hey! New York. All right, man. Thanks, Tom. Thank you for calling Tom, in. Hi, everybody. So much, Tom. Tom. Nice. Thank you so much, Tom. All right, so who else is out there in internet land? Well, I got to uh, figure Aww. out how to get the next call. Do we have, like, call. chatty questions? Or they, like... How do I kill one and start the next? Hold on, there's another one. Hey! Holy cow, That's there's us. somebody else coming in. That's us from his speakers. You got to turn down your speakers, everybody. Before we bring you on. Turn down your speakers, hello. Turn down your Hold on. Now, Kevin, a bunch of people, you need to stop calling in. What do you mean? <laughs> well, you just asked him to call in. I know, but not when somebody else is on. They keep popping up. Stop calling in. Uh, oh, wait. We, okay, we took somebody. Everybody uh, else stop calling. Yeah, everybody, we took somebody. Everybody else stop calling. Because uh, if I see your name keep popping up, I'm not going to take your call. Oh. How's that? Ooh. Ooh. Them's Te fighting words. Te Teacher's Kevin mad. Poirier. <laughs> Kevin Poirier keeps calling, and I'm not going to decline his call again. Oh, Kevin Poirier. <laughs> so who's on now? We got Richard on. Hey, Hello, Richard. Richard. What's going on, guys? What's where, going on, where, dude? Where are you calling from? Where, where are you Skyping from, Richard? Fayetteville, Arkansas. I see. It looks like he's in his garage. I is see it, a car back there. Yeah. Is that a is that a Volkswagen? He's in or his is that own a Volvo. That that is a Honda. Honda CRX. He's oh, in his own whoa, streaming whoa, garage. I was, like, I was like, it's either a Honda we, or a Volvo. And I we are starting Volvo. a streaming oh, garage good. trend. If you're in a garage, please show us Skype us and show us your car. Here you go. Yeah. But uh, please don't have the car running unless the garage door is open. <laughs> well, so, that'd be a whole great CRV. show, actually. Maybe. Okay. So so Richard, here's the thing, Richard. Richard, it's Saturday oh, night Kevin. in Arkansas. What happens? 
It's Saturday night in your town of Arkansas. Where do you go? Yeah. Uh. Don't say the Circle go to the, K. Uh, go to Dixon Street. Dixon Street. Dixon drink. Street. What happens in Dixon Street? They drink. Just drink. <laughs> hey, my kind of guy. <laughs> All right, that's my kind of street. I gotta go check that out. I wish I had a Dixon Street. Although I have a wine cellar, I guess that's, I don't have a wine cellar. You have a wine, wine cellar? cellar. I don't, I don't. I have like a cardboard this guy? box. I have a cardboard box with some wine. That is <laughs> fancy. Actually, it's not a cellar. <laughs> so Richard, have you seen uh, Three Amigos? Uh, I have. I have. A long time ago. But... Yes. What'd you think? Uh, good movie. It's funny. It was one of the uh, first comedies I ever saw. So... Oh, good choice. Way to start. That's a good way to get yeah, cool. Yeah. That was a way major. So uh, when, when are we going to get to see Neverland? <laughs> Ah, soon. Uh, well, there's going to be a, a, a movie that comes out before that, that'll be seen before that. we got to get it into some film festivals, and they don't like uh, when movies go to the internet before the film festival. You so should that's really why try to... Yeah. So, we're, so, so that's why you haven't seen it yet. It's done. Um, okay. Although I bumped into a buddy, and he said we should just start doing like little rent theaters around the you know, country. You can four-wall your it. movie. Four-wall your movie. Four wall. Rent, I don't even know what that out. means. No, rent out the In theater. Fayetteville. Yeah, Fayetteville, Arkansas. Done. We're coming. Is there a theater on Dixon yeah. Street? Dude. Yeah, totally. Oh! oh it that. sounds like Stupid for Movies will open and introduce your movie. Done. Well, what we should do. I want to do like a little tour thing. Get a couple friends that have shorts. Like Road show. Short. Yeah, just like travel around and sell We have. Popcorns. I have a venue for that. We were going to talk. We'll talk after this. We yeah, actually had that idea. Yeah, we're thinking of doing some live. Uh, we're thinking of doing some live streaming of Q and A or possibly the movies if the if the filmmakers are into it uh, for for independent films. We want to help independent films as well, That's and we've been great. trying to figure out how to do that. That'd be great. Well, we got to put Fayetteville. I mean, Fayetteville. It's Fayetteville, right? It's not. I'm not saying that wrong. Yeah, Fayetteville, Arkansas. You, it's where the uh, the University of Arkansas is. Done. Raise oh, back. college town. I went to AU and that's yeah, UA. Look at that. I don't, know, I don't really, know what that is. I don't know what that is. Exactly. All right, Thank Richard. You so Thank you so much, Richard. Richard, Richard right, everybody. Hey. Arkansas. Woo. I could be the first Jew he's ever talked to. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> I wanted oh so God, bad to go do that. Well, I love that you like got forward. Like This has now become serious. I, I, <laughs> I, I really wanted to go and say that. I wanted to possibly go. <laughs> You know you're talking to Jews, right? But I, <laughs> I decided to let it go. Mark came oh, in because we were. Oh I God. was thinking that I'm like we could go, we could go stream there. Oh no, no. they won't let us. No, <laughs> that's right. I'll just go ahead of you, blonde hair, blue eyes, German. <laughs> the Aryan thing. The All right, Aryan who else thing. we got there, uh, Mike? We have, here's Kevin. Kevin. What? Made Kevin made it through. Mister Call Ins. <laughs> You told us to call in. Well, I yes. know. I'm with you, I know, but what happens is it keeps popping up. There's saying. no, there's no way. I don't think there's any way unless somebody could tell me for Skype when you're live with one person that other ones keep popping up. That's, hey, I hear you. We're very, we're what's very happening? popular. A very popular show, and uh, yeah, like but we're it. very happy you called. So what's going on, Kevin? Oh uh, hi. Oh whoa, I can hear you now. Oh good. Okay, so can we ask? Um, can we ask? Whoa, that's creepy. I see myself. Can we ask <laughs> Kevin here, have some more! Dude, this future um, is fucked, wait, man. I, wait, I just want to know if Alex Albrecht remembers LVU Campus. LVU Campus? Do you remember that game on Xbox Live? Uh, uh, not Tom Clancy, Ra Rainbow Six maybe? Rainbow Six Vegas! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Okay, do you remember Klitsy? Dude, I knew you looked familiar. You have a goatee. What are you doing? I know. I Amazing. Love yeah, right? I love it. I'm loving the hair. Uh, I know. I need a fucking haircut. But, yeah. um, okay, I have a question. Um, Shoot. For both of you. Yes. Um, it is, if you guys could choose to make a movie with any writer, director, and actor, what would it be? Boy, that's tough. I'm going to say for actor, uh, Mark Ruffalo. I think he's sort of on my list of or Mark Ruffalo or um, um, Sam uh, uh, Rockwell. Those two guys, Mark Ruffalo, Sam Rockwell. If I shoot something and they're in it, amazing. Um, uh, you know, I, this is going to sound weird, but I might go J.J. Abrams if I was making something. Oh, why went to, why went to junior high school with? You went to junior Mark high school with the J.J. Yeah. Abrams. He was one of the cool kids. Oh, well, okay. I, that's funny. Hey, I so, so he didn't talk to you? That's what you're saying. He taught, no, I, know, <laughs> the, I, 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 I think I've said this before on the show. That the, yeah. the, the best moment of my junior high school life. Yes. This might be the only moment I remember. <laughs> yeah. Is when JJ, because mm -hmm. JJ had his little comedy click, and you can tell that his comedy click was different. 
Sure. Because even at whatever, 14 years old, you could tell that there was something with this guy. Yeah. I remember one of the, one of his like consigliaries, <laughs> his comedy Amazing. consigliaries, walked yeah. up to me, put his arm around me and said, you know, we think you're funny. Uh, I was like, oh, I was like, was oh my God. You're you, in. My mind was blown. Did you take that in or did you just go, uh, thanks and walk no, away? No, well, here's the thing is that. Uh, and all those guys now work for him, right? Probably. No, actually, a lot of them, uh, well, no, those guys came later in, like, kind of, like, high okay. school, college. Yeah, yeah. Like, Greg Rumberg and those guys. Because yeah, yeah, I also yeah. went to junior high with Greg Rumberg. Or yeah, yeah. Public school with Greg Rumberg. Um, JJ, in junior high school, mm -hmm. used to self-publish a newspaper. Called, Interesting. Now, this is, like, in 1906. <laughs> okay, this is not like, well, who doesn't do that? Okay, this so is 1906. Like nobody did that. The paper. Yes, nobody did that in 1906. <laughs> yeah, it was on and parchment. It, it was called The Wizard. Oh. And I used to write TV reviews for it. You wrote for J.J. Abrams. I wrote for I wrote TV reviews wow. for The Wizard, J.J. Abrams. That now, is amazing. Now we're talking that should be like, on every business card you have. No, no, really. I wrote for J.J. Yes. Abrams. Now we're talking, you know, 75 words, so it wasn't like, hey, uh, hey, again, this was like, you know, I wrote the, uh, 75 words for J.J. Abrams. Abrams. <laughs> exactly. The pinnacle of my career, as yeah. it turns out. Who knew? Amazing. Uh, so, yeah, that was my J.J. Abrams story. Yeah, I would say, uh, oh, God, for writer, um, you know, I might go Aaron Sorkin just because he, the stuff that he does is so, like, fast-paced and really smart. And one of those things that sometimes you can really see the see writing, and you can see his writing, but it also sounds like people. Oh, sure. If that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Where, like, some writers, you're like, people don't say that. With Aaron Sorkin, you're like, I know that people don't say that, but it sounds like people. You know what I mean? <laughs> <clears throat> so those are my three. Those are your three. What about you? Uh, director, I would have to say Stanley Kubrick. Oh, um, yes, yes. So I didn't know we could go posthumous. I thought it was a potential movie, but go ahead, yes. Um, Kubrick. Writer, although he later became a director, I'm going to cheat because he started his career writing, I will say Billy Wilder. Ah, okay. And I wrote that down, Wilder. And when it comes to actor, only because I only because I just saw a couple films of his and I and I love him is Gene Hackman, just because I love Gene Hackman. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. You know, it's really funny you bring that up because I just saw uh, The Greatest Lover... Uh, and the wor or the world's, world's greatest, greatest lover, lover. Gene Hackman and, uh, and uh, or G yeah, Gene, uh, Gene Wilder, Wilder and, and uh, uh, everybody else who's in those movies. I and I had just seen Young Frankenstein. I want to make a movie like that. I want to make a comedy like that. Like those, it's such a specific type of comedy. It's like slapstick is cool in those movies. You know what I mean? Like there are times when people get slapped, and it's the funniest thing you've ever seen. You know what I mean? But there's sort of in a weird way, high concept movies. You know what I mean? Not that weird, but like Young Frankenstein, fairly high concept. You know what you I mean? You know what? A, a black and white comedy. <clears throat> yeah. Like that's done in so stylish and yep. so over the top. Yep. That's a Gene, Gene Wilder, who I, I loved so much yes. back in the day. You may yeah. like our new show then. What? Oh, oh, oh what? Mike's going to plug his show. I Was don't that really, a I'm going to relax spoiler, while Mike plugs his show. I'm just saying, there's, there's, I'm saying it's, it's got that kind of comedy <laughs> elements to it. Go, Look Mike, tell us. He is. No, it's no. the Wacky Nutty right, Show. Oh, uh, <laughs> huh? All right, it's thanks, Glitzy. It's the Wacky Nutty Great Show. Thanks, Yo, Kevin. Yo, thumbs up you. from Kevin. Good seeing you, Glitzy. <laughs> we used to play uh, yeah. Xbox Live way back in the day. Is that right? See you, Glitzy. <laughs> All right. So who else we got? Uh, here we go. We got one Marlene. Let's see. One on. Marlene. We got somebody coming in. Hold on. They're coming in. I hear myself. It's amazing. Hi. You Hello. Come All right, well, I think we, this is audio only, it seems like. Uh, we got one. I'll take audio. Oh, wait, no. That? I see video coming in. Well, Hold on. Uh oh. This just in. Video. <laughs> it's video. <laughs> hello, Hold Marlene. On. Hello. Full screen. Hold on. Hi. From Lake Wisdom, Pasaki. <laughs> All right. We're in. Oh, what about Bob? Another. That would be oh, another what about Bob? That's another great one. I love one. that movie. Marlene. I think Hi, I'm getting guys. that wrong. What is it? Hi, I'm calling from New York. Hey, oh, we had a Jersey guy yeah. like a couple of calls ago. The city of my birth. Where in New York are you? Uh, in Yonkers. Oh, yeah. Yonkers, that's the first stop on the uh, Metro North. Heading, the heading towards the city, I know exactly. Yeah. Yep. You, ah, got you got a thing. I got a thing with the yeah, Yonkers. I should go, I guess. By the way, Yonkers <laughs> is finally getting its act together. Do you not agree? Fa Yonkers is finally putting it together, right? I do. Doing, they're building a lot of uh, condos and stuff, cleaning it up. Mm. Ghetto Square is not so ghetto anymore. Yeah, that's for I our to, new show, that, Stupid for Architecture. I go to that giant, <laughs> I go to that giant grocery store there. There's a giant grocery store at Yonkers. That's true. You're right? What is that giant place called? I forget. Yonkers Ralph. There's a There's a giant grocery store in Yonkers. I forget what it's called now. 
But anyway, that, you know, you know, that's our other show, Stupid for Stupid Gentrification. Stupid for Gentrification. Stupid for Gentrification. Which is coming. What is your so, question? So what is your question? Uh, what's your question, Yonkers? Hello. <laughs> All right, so Three Amigos is on my list of shame. Oh. I was going to see what your number one on your list of shame. List of shame? Well, uh, define list of shame. Have what does that mean? Have not seen the movie. Have not uh, seen the movie. A movie that you haven't seen that you really should have seen. Yes. And we're, we're, just so you know, we're getting a little bit of feedback. I think you need to turn your Ustream uh, feed off. Oh. Or mute it. All right, there yeah. we go. Just mute it. There we go. Perfect. I'll tell you what. I will answer this question only because uh, it is no longer valid. For years, okay. and years and years and years and years and years and years. Oh, this is what you which just remedied. Which I guess is about seven years. Seven years, okay. Uh, no. uh, I had never seen Casablanca. Ah. And even okay. though I had the DVD for Casablanca, and, so then, you, oh, and then I had the Blu-ray of Casablanca, and I had never seen Casablanca. Because, so you were actively avoiding watching Casablanca. Yes, because I used to, because I used to like to tell that as a story when someone would say, like Yonkers, when someone would say, right. did you ever, is there a famous movie you didn't see? Got it. Well, I finally watched Casablanca, yes. I kid you not, like two years ago. And, wow. oh, look at that. I, I don't lie, this is stupid wow. for uh, truth telling. This is stupid for truth telling movie. And the movie was so effing Mine good. Mine was a documentary, so. It was so effing good, you, I, I can't yeah. believe I waited that long. You, yeah. you know who wrote that? Huh? You know who wrote that? Uh, Theo Epstein, GM of the Red Sox, his grandfather wrote Casablanca. What? Wow. Yep. Interesting. That's something he would only know. He, he wouldn't know that if it was like As the son of GM of the Blue Jays. Of the Blue Random Jays, amazing. He would know that. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to say, uh, and I think people are going to be uh, uh, shocked. I've seen parts of it because it's on TV all the time, but I've not sat down and seen Goodfellas. Oh, Goodfellas. All the way through. And I'm the same way. Dan Trachtenberg, my buddy, uh, literally gave me the Blu-ray for one of my birthdays because he was like, I, I, you, you just have to see this. And I just haven't yet. Lost Boys was another one, but then I finally saw that one. Well, uh, but Goodfellas. Is well, good, Goodfellas is the film that should have won Scorsese his directing Oscar. Yeah, yeah. And then Dances with Wolves, and it was like a whole yeah. nightmare. Yeah, it was like, yeah. All right, Yonkers. Uh, anyway, thank you so much, Yonkers. Thank you, so, Yonkers. For calling in, Yonkers, everyone. Hey. Come on, look at that. She even has her own green screen. I don't know. It's amazing. She's ready for production. Yeah. Hey. Thank you. Hey. Now we have to vamp for a second while. Game on. Was that a, was We're it, good. Is there an audio yeah. sting? That was uh, amazing. The, you know, Corey did a Corey who was not here tonight. Yes. Uh, he's done so many great graphics for our show over mm -hmm. the weeks. It's unbelievable. And you know what? Uh, uh, another graphic he came up with, which we love just as much as anything else he's done for us. Yes. Parental guidance. Hey. There it is. Parental is guiding us. Do we? Am I moving? What am I doing? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, one. And Philip Nelson, everybody. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. It's like magic. Oh, it's magic. <laughs> Phil, here's the thing. You're Phil Nelson. You live in Texas, right? Yes, I do. Why are you always here? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you have kids? It's more fun I here. I have a litter of children back home in Texas. Yes, I do. Now, is anybody, is it like home alone? Is anybody taking care of them? No. No? Amazing. Phil Nelson, everybody! Yeah. Free range chicken. So I like the cage. We have dolls. Stupid have for social services. So here's, we, got a lot of, we, we got a lot of new people because of YouTube and Ustream and all our Facebooks are going up. So we got a lot of new viewers today. So here's what happens in this segment. Philip Nelson comes on, recommends a movie you can watch with your families. Nice. So if you have mm -hmm. kids, or you just want a nice family film to watch, and not one of these dummy down family films, yeah. good ones that everybody can enjoy, adults and kids, Philip comes on and recommends one. So here you go. I'm excited. No pressure. <laughs> well, you know, you know, the, like, like Mike said, the idea of a good family film is not a crappy movie that you put on and let the kids watch while you go wash dishes or clean the house. It's a movie that's actually good enough for the entire family to watch and enjoy. And so this movie is one that I loved as a little kid, oh, and it made exciting. me terrified of people that were missing fingers. Ah, okay. It's called Cloak and Dagger. Sure. Yeah. Oh, sure. yeah. With uh, Henry Thomas, mm -hmm. after he did E.T., mm -hmm. Dabney Coleman, isn't it? Isn't Dabney I, Coleman? I, I love yeah, yeah. Dabney Coleman from 9 to 5. Yeah. Yep. Oscar nominated. So it, it's Cloak and Dagger, and the concept of this movie is actually, I think it's a great family movie because it's a suspenseful movie but it's family appropriate. So uh, Henry Thomas plays a little kid named Davy whose mother is dead mm -hmm. and his dad works too much. Mm -hmm. So he has an imaginary friend named Jack Flack who's the greatest action hero of all time. And in this movie, an FBI agent is killed by the bad guys and slips a computer game cartridge in his backpack. And right. this cartridge actually has the blueprints for this secret <clears throat> spy plane. And, and so the movie is just an action movie of this little kid running from bad guys trying to kill him and mm. kidnap him and nobody believes him because he's a kid that he's being chased. 
And, uh, you know, and in parental guidance, we rank it in different categories because every parent has different hot buttons that they focus on, that they, they are concerned about. And, and those categories are action, language, action, language, romance, peril, and adult enjoyment. And in the action category, we rank them on a scale from one to five, one being the lowest, five being the highest, in case you missed your elementary math for that guy that wasn't doing his well, homework. No. Um, I but, he sorry. was like, oh, I was, I, was, I was just studying the order of numbers. <laughs> I know. <laughs> one through five. But I had to take a break. Uh, and this is a good, a good distraction. So uh, in the action category for Cloak and Dagger, we're going to give it a five because this movie is action-packed. As I mentioned, the entire movie is this kid running from adults, trying to kidnap him, kill him, and get this, these secret government plans back. So it's the highest rating for action we can give it. In the language category, we're going to give it a very low rating. It's only going to get a two because Alex wasn't in the movie. I was not, no. <laughs> There would have been a whole lot of F-bombs in I that know. PG movie. PG-13. It would have been like F-U-13. <laughs> nice. So, we have derailed. Um, so, uh, but in the language, we're, uh, so in the language category, we're going to give it a 2 because it's very, very minor language. Now, in the romance category, um, we're going to give it a 1 because there really was zero romance. It's just strictly awesome action for kids. And in the peril category, we're going to give it a 5. And the reason we're going to get it a five is because pretty much the whole movie is adults trying to kill a child. <laughs> you know, so there is a lot of peril, and there's this one scene that, like I said in the in the in the uh, the pre pre discussion, there was this lady. They're saying, "Look out for the woman with three fingers." Ooh, and, that's creepy. And I'm going to give a little bit away because you need to watch this movie. And there's this old lady that's trying to help Henry Thomas or Davy escape from the bad guys, and then she takes off her glove and has three fingers. Ooh. And so it's like this old little grandmother that's really the worst bad guy. And, and so it's actually pretty fun. And I'm going to give it in the adult enjoyment category a four. It's, it's almost a, a perfect um, uh, family film. And plus, because I am from San Antonio, it was shot in San Antonio, Texas. So we got to give a shout out to the Alamo City. Um, a lot of the action took place in the Riverwalk. And I remember when I first moved to San Antonio 13 years ago, I had to find the place where the Crossfire Gambit took place. Sure, it was a very important yeah. part of my childhood. Absolutely, but yeah. that was in the movie. And so uh, today, this week's movie, as we've said, is Cloak and Dagger. It's an awesome family adventure film, and uh, we hope you go check it out and rent it. And uh, let us know online what you think, because please leave us comments on YouTube, on uh, on UStream, and let us know what you think of these uh, suggestions. But I appreciate you guys having me here tonight. It's nice to be Dude, here in the movie. garage. Great movie. Yeah. I, you know what? I like Cloak and Dagger. You know, yeah. <laughs> It's live. That's right. I love it. Case, Bye, rent or burn. In case you needed more yeah, proof, yeah, it's live. That's, yeah, that's you guys. No, it's already, it's already done. No, um, I like it. I liked uh, Cloak and Dagger and because I was a big fan of uh, Dabney Coleman. I thought he was a really funny mm. act, uh, car uh, comedy actor of the 80s. And what I liked about the film is that uh, it was shot in San Antonio, so it had that kind of... It, it, it didn't feel like a studio film. Right. Yeah. And what I also liked about it is I felt like <clears> it was... Uh, it was for kids, but adults could enjoy it too. And also, I felt like it was kind of a preteen version of like War Games. Yeah. Oh yeah, you was... know, where War Games is a little bit for the older kids because it's like a post-apocalyptic, <laughs> but it's still kind of you know want to play a game, whatever. But yet, it's a little. It's a good film. You know, the guy who directed that film, this guy named Richard Franklin, he had an interesting career because he was the director, dumb enough, may I say, <laughs> not to direct Cloak and Dagger, which I like, but he was actually dumb enough to direct Psycho Two. Wow. Oh, wow. So somebody... He jumped the shark at Psycho 2? Somebody had to, had to take the reins from Alfred Hitchcock and direct Psycho 2. <laughs> yeah. So here's Richard Franklin thinking, well, okay, I'll direct Psycho 2. I got nothing going on. Uh, and so he directed Psycho 2, which actually was, you know... I, the thing with Psycho 2 is that nothing's going to be Psycho, so why sure, even try? Right. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like 2010. Right, you yeah. know, uh, Nothing's going to be 2001, so right. Peter Himes, why even try to make, yeah, 2000, yeah, yeah. Make, make your own film? Right. So Psycho 2 is okay. He also directed FX2. The sequel to the Brian Brown yep. uh, thriller, which was I loved not I actually liked FX. FX too, is yeah. terrific. FX I don't remember okay too, too I, but I love the first one. Right. So Richard Franklin, I mean, he's got a, it's a little tainted, but he's got a pedigree. He's not just some guy off the street. Yeah. So it's well done. Yeah. And uh, I like Cloak and Dagger. It's a good movie. It's well, good I'm movie. glad you approve. 
Because you're always, you're always, because uh, uh, Philip Nelson is always amazed that I approve of the films that he, he, he I'm he on does. a quest to find a movie I like that he hates, and I know that there are some, but I'm hiding them from you for that special moment. Amazing. Because I just want to shock you live on the show one time with Mario Brothers or something like that. Okay, that night, that's, that's, that's No, that's actually, amazing. I did not like Mario Brothers. Space so. Truckers. Space Truckers. Space Truckers. No, no, here's the ultimate I spit on your grave. No, 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 it, I love that. Mac and me. Is that the one with did Michael Moore do that? Yeah. Is that the Michael Moore movie? Mac and I'm just me. Kidding. Mac and me is a ET bad. ripoff. <laughs> yeah. It's an ET ripoff that was basically sponsored by McDonald's. I remember that. So the alien's name is like Mac, yeah. and there's a dance, a song and dance scene out of McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. And it's a, it's a real movie. You know, Mac and me, and they dance on the tables at McDonald's. It's like the most train wrecked film ever. <laughs> I remember now, if the you had recommended, toys. if you had recommended Mac and Me, I have to say I would not be on board. You would actually probably ban me from Stupid for Movies for life, wouldn't you? That, uh, at least for a week. Yeah. At least for a week. Maybe not life. Maybe not life. Life is a little harsh. That's true. <laughs> not for Mac and Me though. Exactly. No, not for Mac. And me. Yeah, exactly. I love it. So there's a uh, parental guidance, folks. Come Yay! on, get some. Parental guidance. Go. Go. What's happening? So anyway, Philip, oh, wow! <laughs> it's like he was never here. I didn't know Lance here. Burton was here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this my guy. God. All right, so we've, uh, we've done this. Here's, a, here's a, let's, let's recap. Dude, I love bullet points. Hmm? We've done the Scream 4. Scream 4. You've done the Cutting the Cord. Cutting the Cord. You've done the uh, uh, Dog, Dog Day Afternoon. Dog Day Afternoon. Network. Network. Tales from the Script. Tales from the Script. Three Amigos. You've done the Cloak and Dagger. Cloak and Dagger. There's only one thing left to do, folks. What is it? Bye, Renter Burn. Hey! <laughs> So here's, here's how it goes, is oh. to go back to my counter for some reason. What I'm saying is, is that uh, by rent to burn, here's what happens. Producer yeah. Mike has been going on uh, the Dignation, the Facebook, the Twitter, I don't know what the hell he goes. The Dignation. Dig. Whatever, the Dig, the, the Twitter, the whatever, I don't know what, the Commodore 64, the Atari 1200, I don't know where he goes. They are doing and, new, huh? they are doing new computers <laughs> that look like Commodore 64s. You're they are. Mistaken. I love it. So that excited. was my first computer ever. And after that was Mac all I the was way. Vic 20. So, uh, mm. really? Vic 20. Lame. I was anyway, Apple IIe. Huh? Ooh. Apple IIe, baby. I used a Old Commodore school. Pet when I was programming BASIC. Let's get to the point. Hey! <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. Mike is going to throw out uh, uh, films that he has uh, culled from the good folks at, uh, at DIG. And, uh, no, Alex Facebook. And I, uh, Facebook. Oh, it's Facebook this week. And Alex and I are going to say whether you should... And the chat rooms. And Alex and I are going to say whether uh, <laughs> we should rent it, buy it, or burn it. Now, rent this it, is buy the, it, or burn it. Or buy, it. rent, or burn it. Now... We've been calling it for 49 episodes. Here's the thing. <laughs> this is the, supposedly the lightning round. Yes. So I'm going to say this quickly. Yes. Buy, rent, or burn. All right. Because what I do is I start talking about the no, movie, no, it's fine. You and then my complaints no, is a lightning round. I mean, we're definitely it. over lightning. this week. We're lightning definitely at one hour nineteen lightning. already with a one hour show, but we're fine. Let's do it. We're People fine. Are it. Zolbrek is here for Okay, here we go. Line. We're gonna take a couple from Facebook, and then we're gonna go to the chats. Okay. Do okay. it. First, though, I'm gonna take one from my mom because okay. it's her birthday. She asked about Boynton Beach Club. Do you know that at all? Boynton Beach Club. Is that a place? Some movie. <laughs> Only because here's why, because it's filmed where she's now got a place or something. They they got a place in Florida. Boy, it's funny when, when I when I heard the yeah. name, I thought of Neil Simon, but I don't think it's Neil no, Simon. Yeah, me too. I think it was I think of Biloxi Blues or I something. Are, like or, that, well, yeah. you think of Brighton Beach Memoirs. Brighton Beach Memoirs, yeah, exactly. Happy birthday, Mike's mom. Hey. Hey. hey all right, moving on. Okay. Um, no, nothing. No. Stefan Dorr from Facebook asks about who framed Roger Rabbit. Oh, oh. for crying out! That's a buy. Jesus, Jesus. that's Come a on. buy and a half. Yeah. That's a buy and a half. Bob Hoskins was robbed. Bob Hoskins should have been nominated for Best Actor Oscar. Oh, and he was interesting. Not, and it was a scandal at the time. And it deserves to be a scandal because he was amazing in he that film. He was amazing. He was not nominated for Best Actor, and he should have been. And, no, and uh, amazing, Roger yeah. Rabbit is the, be is the last decent film that Z Robert Zemeckis ever did before he went all mocap crap on yeah, us. Yeah, amazing. Right? And uh, I uh, love Bear that movie. Wolf wasn't bad. Though. It's a great, great movie. Great movie. All right, <laughs> Facebook.com slash Stupid for Movies. Kevin Pham asked about... The entire Lord of the Ring trilogy. <laughs> I say bye just because it was a great thing for me. However, however, when you go back and you revisit those movies, you will start to see that the CG not as good with the at, at, you know Legolas jumping up on the elephants at times looks like, you know. So was that a buy rent to burn? No, it was a buy. Oh, it's a buy. Definitely buy. Uh, I respect the films more than I like them because at the time New Line was taking a three hundred million dollar gamble on their entire company. Yep. On these films. Yep. Like literally, they roll the dice on the company yep. making these films. Yeah. And the only reason why Return of the King won Best Picture was, I think, as sort of an acknowledgement of the chance they had taken. So, 
Um, I will give it a wrench. I'm not a big fan of them. The second one, a bunch of kids sit in a tree for three hours. I don't know what the hell's going on there. It's, <laughs> it's a meta conversation about with a tree end. I, I, I don't know what's going on. Is, is, All right, is, so give it a buy, Renner. Right, that's a rent. All right, moving on. <coughs> Uh, Facebook, again, we'll stick with that. Uh, Jay Wang asked about a Japanese animated film called Paprika. Ooh, uh, Paprika. Paprika is a good film. I've and actually, uh, yeah, actually, you know what? Kat, uh, Kat, who is one of our uh, beloved crew members, Kat yes. brought us who something very... Who will be part of the new show next week. Whoa, hey. that's why you brought up Paprika. Oh, I don't that's know. I didn't know. I didn't know that Paprika. Uh, Kat said something <laughs> interesting before the show, which is that Paprika and Inception have a lot of similarities. Not Paprika is animated, but... Uh, oh, yes, that's the one we were watching Inception. She's like, this is totally stolen from Paprika. Yeah. And I just nodded. But you know what, it's I didn't know what she was talking or about. Or Dreamscape, but yeah. But you know, Dreamscape with Dennis Quaid. Love that yeah, movie. Yeah. But you know, it's a good film, Paprika. I'd give that a... Uh, you know, I, I'd give it a buy if you know what you're getting into. Yeah, I've, no, I've never heard of it. Right. It's It's good. I'd give it a buy. All right, one more from Facebook. Oliver Perkoff asks about Malibu Eyes. Malibu Eyes is a <laughs> burn, man. <laughs> but Malibu hold on. Eyes is a film that I produced. Yes. The what? only film I it's ever produced, produced by Mark Kaiser with a bunch of exclamation points Amazing. on Facebook. Amazing. <laughs> Malibu Eyes, here's what happens. A First bunch up, of, is that... Yeah, go. A bunch that? of very talented people got together and made a very bad movie. Uh, now, it happen. happens all the time. It does happen. It was like a okay? sexy movie. It was like a Cinemax type movie, wasn't it? It was originally called Voyeur. Cause it was I think a, I have seen this movie. No, you haven't. I think I have. It was originally called Voyeur. It's about a young girl yeah. who uh, is in this town. She's very isolated, so she starts to sort of spy on the people in the town. Yeah. And she gets caught up in sort of these, this, these sexual situations. And, okay, that um, might not be the movie. That it I was saw. done with the best of intentions, <clears throat> and there was and the actors were terrific, and it was well directed, and uh, it was shot on location on the beach here in Malibu, so it was very authentic looking, but the movie was not very good. All <laughs> let's right. Face it. Okay, let's go to our YouTube chat room, right? YouTube, we're live on YouTube now. All right, here we go. Lady Diode asked about desperately seeking Susan. I actually. I'm going to say rent. I'll say rent on that. Yeah, too. I mean, it's Susan a fun... Seidelman, the uh, Susan Seidelman film, yeah. right? Yeah, but which I think, uh, I think was desperately seeking Susan. My acting coach, uh, Dennis Berkeley, my old acting coach, Dennis Berkeley, may very well have been in that movie. I know he was in so, one as, as of Susan? those. Not as Susan, as, as desperately guy seeking <laughs> Susan, I think. <laughs> All right, Rogue Filmmaker asks about Inland Empires. Yeah, you know, um, oh, I, I assume it's the uh, it's the David Lynch in, in, Inland Empire. Yeah. Oh, Empire. Singular. Yeah. Empire. Looks like there's an S. Um, mm -hmm. David Lynch uh, is too. David Lynch. Uh, Watch how quick a, this can be changed. Here's a Tricaster. Whoa! Here Ready? Is. Watch. Hey! Oh, boom! boom. Tricaster people. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say Rent if you're into those types of movies. And it's, it's not my favorite one yeah. of his. I, I I think I I think after a while David Lynch wound up being so far up his own butt. Yeah. That, you know, I, I couldn't understand what the hell he's talking about anymore. Yeah. And Inland Empire, he was getting to that point. So I will say rent. Yeah. All right. The French 91 on YouTube, youtube.com slash streaming garage, asks about uh, Neverland. Ah, is that, I'm assuming he may be my short film that he's talking about. Possibly. Is that it? I say Possibly. A, a bye. I don't know anything hey, else. I'm going to say bye. Come on. I'm, That's I'm a bye. bye. Yeah. Hey. And, and you know what? Just because I'm going to throw this in because I'm feeling generous. Yes. Finding Neverland, a bye. Finding Neverland, a bye. Most definitely, yes. That's a great movie. All it right. is. I love that movie. Uh, one more from our YouTube chat room. Captainy. I'm going to say Captainy. 2K09 asks about Hero. The Hero. Dustin Hoffman film? Let's say a Dustin Hoffman film. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hero is a Dustin Hoffman film. Yeah, I've seen it. And, uh, you know, it's I'll give that a rent. It's yeah. okay. It's okay. I don't even know if I would go as there, far You know, as it, it there's some, there's some good like stuff it. in it about sort of like, uh, th that's another film that's very much like kind of how, how, how the media perceives yeah. people. Yeah, because it's guy, the homeless guy that doesn't that's right. save the girl that's from right. the airplane crash, but then gets the sort of, she, everybody thinks he does, and he doesn't say anything. And so, uh, we have I'd a rent. A, we have the buy rent. Nah, or burn rent give it a, I love Dustin Hoffman yeah, so I'll say much. Rent. I don't want to rent it. And we're still hoping for a horrible one so we can sucker punch. Oh, nice. Yeah, we can sucker punch something. But I don't think we're going even to. even worse? Yeah, the worst. We take the worst movie of the year and make it lower than a burn. Ah, yeah. got it. Let's, have, show, let's show an example. Do you guys like take, take off this. Take say off Mac hero. and me. Take Someone say Mac and me. Hold on. All right. Here's what it looks like. Mac and me. How about Mac and me? Oh, that is such a sucker punch. Oh! oh. <laughs> you guys, that's the money you guys spent on blowing up Sucker Punch. Corey, Corey, Corey. Take that, crap. Avatar. That might have been the budget of Sucker Punch used to <laughs> shatter All right. in three dimensions. Let's go to Ustream. We still love Ustream, so let's give some love to our Ustream chat, people. Chris Merrigan asked about State of Grace. 
Oh, State of Grace. Is State that, of that's, Grace. The, that's, that's a Phil Juano film with, uh, what's his name? I thought you that know, was a TV show. Isn't there a TV show called The State of Grace? Could be. But no, Phil a, originally, he did 3 o'clock high, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Phil Juano did Rattle and Hum, the YouTube documentary. Yeah, and yeah. then he did State of Grace. I assume that's the State of Grace he's talking about. Yeah. yeah. He did State of Grace, and that kind of was Juano's downfall. I mean, after he did that film, which was not well received, it's yeah. an okay film. Uh, basically, Juano just sort of disappeared. Yeah, and I've never I, seen I it. I think but... he's doing commercials now. Um, it was, it's one of those films that uh, is not as bad as its reputation, yeah. but it's still okay. I give it a rent. Hmm. All right, we got two more from Abkroff. Abercroft, Abercroft, whatever. One, two, three. <laughs> Close enough. In the Ustream yeah. chat room, Ustream.com slash Stupid for Movies every week, Thursday as well as on YouTube. Uh, asked about Taxi Driver. I'm not going to answer that. Uh, I will for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, there's an amazing, amazing essential Blu ray of Taxi Driver that came out a week ago. Yeah. And if you are asking about Taxi Driver, there's no renting or burning. You got to buy that Blu ray. It is amazing. That Blu-ray actually wound up, they actually wound up, they, ah, thank you. The old audio commentary from Paul Schrader winds up uh, actually on the new Blu-ray. Get out now, now, sometimes what happens is when you have these blue, when you have these DVDs or these laser discs yeah. that were that came out from companies that maybe went out of business yep. or they licensed it for a certain amount of time. They got rid of those, the original Those stuff. extras yeah. are part of that release. Yeah. But sometimes you get a company like Criterion or and other companies do it too, yeah. where they will actually purchase those extras and they'll put it on their new version. Got it's it. kind of rare because it costs money. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes that money isn't worth it, depending right. on how many units they they intend to sell. Right. But with Taxi Driver, they went back and they, they actually took that old laser disc commentary, put it on this new Blu-ray, and it makes it even better. It's fantastic. Hmm. Fantastic. So it's a burn. <laughs> so it's a burn. <laughs> All right, one more, and then we're done with the All show. All right. Matt Film Buff asks about Raging Bull. So here's I'm going to burn that. Let's no, burn no, no, that. No, 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 no. This is good because I actually had not seen Raging Bull. Still have not seen Raging Bull. I, me and my fiance were like, we're morons. We should see Raging Bull. We started watching Raging Bull, and Raging Bull is a boring movie. Said it here wow. on the show. I got, ha I got like 20 minutes into, into the thing, and I looked at my fiance, and she was just like, and I said, are you not enjoying this because we can stop watching it? And we stopped watching that movie. Now, I'm not going to say, because it's Raging Bull, and this is what happens when you say these things, I'm going to say rent. I'm going to say rent. I'm not going to say burn. But I'm going to say rent. But I'm not going to say buy because I did not like that movie. So there you go. Raging Bull. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, another amazing comedy movie. Oh, the yeah. Beetlejuice, Raging Bull. Hey, <laughs> the, hey, if they got into a ring, I would take Beetlejuice every time. I would take hey. Jake Lamont any day of the week. Hey, Amani, uh. Zaymac, what do you think? Is Raging Bull, which is amazing on Blu-ray, the Michael Shadow <laughs> photography, unbelievable. Raging Bull, uh, what do you think? Great commentary on the Beetlejuice You can choose for me. No! Oh. <laughs> there it is. You're oh, right. Amazing. And there you go, folks. Buy, rent, or burn. Hey <laughs> Lots of kids. Buy, rent, or burn. Oh, God. He's got to find it. We're oh. buy, buy, rent, or burn. Hey, it's live, people. It's live. <laughs> amazing. That's a big we try to use every possible really was, thing. Huh? We, we try to use everything we can in the TriCaster. We try to make J Mac just, he needs eight arms. There's yeah, smoke coming out of the yeah. TriCaster after the show. You guys didn't put limits. blankets on it. You put blankets right. on the port they devices. really like, did. These are out ports. <laughs> 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 All right, so here's the thing. We're wrapping it up. Uh, uh, Alex Albrecht from uh, Dignation yes. and the Totally Rad Show. Yes. Thank you so much. Please, thanks for having me. You're fantastic. Oh, no, no, Any, You're welcome anytime. Welcome to come back anytime. Not welcome. Welcome ah! to come back anytime. Now, now here's anytime. controversial. R. Simon 77. I'll take some more controversial to go along with yeah. that. It says, um, Lawrence of Arabia is boring and has too much sand. And Gone with the Wind is long as hell. You know what? Those are both uh, what? statements about... They're I mean, both they're, statements. They're both I'm statements. Just, I'm just throwing it out there to <laughs> other people. You and I'm also pointing out we're live by reading stuff from the chat room. Hey. So it seems like we care. No, no, they're saying that to see what, what yeah. uh, reaction they're going to get out of us. Uh, that ploy is not going to work. Lawrence of Arabia, by the way, list of shame, Yonkers. Oh, you never saw Lawrence that? Arabia. No, I got to go to like the ArcLight one night. I mean, they play it on the big screen all the time at the ArcLight. No, yeah, it's great on an iPhone. And, yeah. our time, and, and, and by the way, Snoop our, our Simon was just being sarcastic. He wants to know he was just kidding and he was yeah. being sarcastic. Ah, I, I, think he was, I think he was making fun of you. Yeah, good. He should be. <laughs> I get it. So, uh, all right, Mike, is that it? Are yeah. you done reading for the chat room? Yeah, no. Next Friday, we got our big premiere of our new show. Hey! Yo, next Friday, Friday, people. Please come back. Everybody who's here now, Ustream.com slash Streaming Garage. We'll premiere it on there. 
Uh, and, and also go to our go to our Facebook page and decide what we should call it. Facebook.com slash streaming garage. I like this sort of uh, it's social, horror, the ho super scary horror voting. monster theater show. I think is the big crazy name going With on right maybe now. Maybe stuff. And, and junk. And junk. And junk and stuff. Things and stuff and films. <laughs> so please come back and see that. That's a great title. Things and stuff and films. There it is. Films. It All right, so here we go. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, uh, thank you, uh, crew. Thank, thank you, YouTube. Crew. Thank you, thank YouTube. you uh, Ustream. Ustream. Thank you all out there. New Tech. Thank New you, tech. New Tech. Thank you, Alex Albrecht. Hey, thank you for watching. What's up? Good night, everyone. Hey. hey.